Hey, this is the Swedish Guitar Nerd, and uh, today's review is a rather rare one. Well, first, uh, it's the first time a company has ever sent me something to review. Someone dared, uh, or was foolish enough, as the manager of the company said, to send me something to review. And, uh, well, as usual, I'm independent, My, there's no strings attached, so I can say whatever I want, and I will. Uh, the other thing that's rare is that it's a Swedish brand. It's not made in Sweden, but it's designed in Sweden, and yeah. It's an actual Swedish brand, what do you know? Um, so yeah, it's the Green LP Pearl. And, uh, well, you can guess what the pearl comes from. It has mother of pearl in race and pearl all around. The LP, hmm, wonder what the LP stands for. Uh, and as for the company name, well, uh, Green. Uh, there was this guitar player, I can't remember his name. Was it Peter Blue, Peter Red, something? Peter, hmm. I don't know. So this is basically a very small company in Sweden. Uh, from what I know, it's two people actually. And uh, they design guitars and they have them made in the Far East. And they are sent to Sweden and set up and only sold in Sweden. So uh, for now, we'll see what this video does with that. So for now, they're just available in the Swedish market. And what shall I say more before I start? This guitar is actually in price, believe it or not, it's lower than uh, an Epiphone Les Paul. I will, of course, compare this to the big brands, the Epiphone and the Gibson versions of a Les Paul. And this is cheaper than both of them, believe it or not. Well, well. Let's start then, and uh, well, I'll start at the top as usual. And what do we have? We have these magnificent tuners, really solid, good, probably the best tuners I've ever tried uh, in any of my videos actually, very solid. Uh, you can tell from uh, the, yeah, the construction of it that it's probably the guitar since it's probably made by a company that makes guitars for several other brands. Uh, you can tell that it's made for vintage style tuners because these tuners actually cover uh, parts of the binding. But would I rather have the things that fit in perfectly or would I ever rather have these wonderful tuners that actually work and seem solid uh, and never, I don't think they'll ever break. Well, I choose these tunes, of course. You hear me complain about the tunes all the time. And uh, continuing along. Can you believe it? <laughs> we have a Les Paul guitar with a volute on it. The thing I'm complaining about every time I get a Gibson style guitar in my hand. Someone's doing it right. Uh, wonderful. So this will... I don't think there's very much risk for this headstock to break off any, any, in any way. Uh, well, it's a mahogany neck. It has to have the uh, Gibson standard specs, of course. Uh, but you have this volute and you have this angle. If you compare this to a Gibson Les Paul, it would be pointing much <laughs> further down. So, yeah. This is made to last. Uh, very thought out, very well made. Yeah, so great stuff. Uh, we have uh, uh, something that Squire probably would call synthetic bone for the nut. It's very well well made. It, the strings go through it really easily. Uh, we have a neck. I'm going to talk about the s uh, dimensions of it later when I talk about playability. But when, yeah, it's a solid piece of mahogany, all right. Um, we have a rosewood fingerboard, we have uh, what they refer to as vintage uh, style frets. Uh, they're not far from medium jumbo actually. 
and you have this shiny mother of pearl inlays in a very Les Paul custom style. You wouldn't find this kind of fancy inlays even on a Gibson Les Paul actually. Um, yeah, and you have a mahogany back maple top body of course it's a Les Paul it's not the Swiss cheese bodies that Gibson are making this weighs like a Les Paul should weigh it's really heavy uh, not like a, yeah it's heavy it's much more heavy than a regular Les Paul standard if you bought a new one that is we have a five ply binding on the back and look here, it's gold everywhere. Even the screws in the back are gold. And we have uh, a two-ply binding in the front where you have this pearl going all around it. Looks really nice. Um, yeah, this wonderful dark sunburst. And yeah, the usual stuff. You have two humbuckers, two pneumatic bridge, uh, two volumes, two tones. And for output, well, you get not as in the Gibson, you get or Epiphone, you get a solid metal output housing and a very solid output as well. So yeah. Materials and hardware, it gets an eight. And uh, basically because you know what I think about necks, if they had dared, they would have gone even further and made the neck out of maple. Would have been much more solid and reliable. Uh, build quality durability. Well, I have had this guitar for a few days and that's kind of rare because usually when I do reviews I usually have the guitars for a very short time. So I have really been able to check it out and really look for faults. And... Uh, well... There aren't any. Uh, it's amazing. I mean, the finish is, if you look at a, like a Gibson style or anything that has like a maple top, uh, any kind of guitar from the Far East, this is made in the Far East, that has a maple top, you'll find that uh, the finish won't be even. It will like spill over at some places and um, there's none of that here. Uh, it's amazing, and I, I, I mean, every part of the build, uh, like the build, build quality of the guitar is really stunning, actually. So, I give it a 9, and I mentioned the volute and the headstock before, and I don't think there's anything that can break on this guitar. It's really solid, really well made. Playability. Well, you have a, uh, a Les Paul style guitar. So I mean getting to the high frets by default is is a problem. Uh, if you're used to playing a modern style guitar with a slim neck, well, this is slimmer than a regular Gibson. And it's slimmer than an Epiphone, but it's thicker than a modern guitar, so it's somewhere in between. Uh, some might find this a good thing, and uh, it's all a personal preference. I'm, I'm used to playing skinny necks, so I'll give it a seven for playability. Uh, mostly, actually, for I mean the less Paul thing here. You can't get up to the high frets. It's a faulty design, if you ask me. Okay, electronics. Uh, we have, as I said, two humbuckers, a three-way switch, two volumes, two tones. Uh, the three-way switch, super solid and uh, really good. Uh, there's nothing to say about the humbuckers. The volumes and the tones. Well, well, welcome to Asia. Um, uh, yeah, they're probably the same or similar to the ones you find in an Epiphone guitar, and they share the same problem. And let me demonstrate. If you have the, 
I mean, the volumes are, they are okay. But the tone knobs. If I'm, I'm, on, I'm on the bridge pickup now and the tone is at full. And then you turn it back halfway. There's hardly any difference. Turn it down to like three. Now it starts going away and turn it down to zero. And we're in Mudland. Uh, so it does too little and then it does too much. Uh, just like basically any two volume, two tone guitar from Epiphone I've ever tried. So I'm guessing they're using the same kind of electronics. And yeah, it's a shame. Electronics, it gets a six. Uh, okay, well, time to play it. Time for some sounds. I'm gonna start with a clean sound. Everything will be, since the tone knobs aren't working, uh, everything is gonna be a 10. I'm gonna go from the bridge pickup to the both together and the neck pickup, finally. So here's a clean sound. <laughs>
Ja, yeah. maybe I should have a category called sustain. And then this guitar would win. Uh, I've never played a guitar with this much sustain ever. The pickups are, what do you know, Gibson style, even in like the characteristics of them. The bridge pickup has a lot of mid-range, a lot of output. It's really focused in the mid-range. And the neck pickup has a, a more even a more even output. Uh, it has more high end, more bass, and it's, yeah, not as mid focused as you usually find on a traditional Gibson Les Paul. And when you use those kind of sounds, you don't really get what I'm always looking for, like the high end, the brightness. Uh, but I suppose that's probably not what you're looking for in this kind of guitar. If you were looking for good sounds that are similar to, I don't know, the traditional rock and blues place, if you're gonna sound like, you know, Jimmy Page, Gary Moore, Joe Bonamassa, and that Peter, hmm, Peter who, Peter Blue, Peter Orange. Well, you're gonna find those sounds in this guitar, no doubt about that. And compared to Epiphone pickups that I'm complaining about all the time, uh, yeah, these are much more defined, much more clear, and much more closer to uh, Gibson pickups. I gave it an 8 for sounds. Uh, I've added a category, and I'm not sure I've done a review since I added it. It's value, and what do you know? I gave it a 10. It looks like an expensive guitar. It feels like an expensive guitar when you pick it up and you play it. It's, there's something about the solidity of it. It's very, it feels well made and it feels exclusive. And uh, yeah, as I said, it costs less than an Epiphone Les Paul in Sweden, so. It's amazing. Uh, I talked to the owner of the company and uh, yeah, apparently they take a lot of time and a lot of, they invest a lot of energy into making guitars that are up to their specs. They had tried several uh, manufacturers actually and shows this one. And they made a good choice according to me. It's a very, you get a lot of guitar for the money. So finally, 8.0 that's a very high number and yeah as i said it really deserves it uh, apart from the electronics it's a wonderful guitar and remember i'm saying this for free um they didn't pay me anything so yeah that's it this has been the Swedish Guitar Nerd reviewing the Green LP Pearl. Yeah, hope you found this useful. See you soon. Bye.